Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Here we are, the week before Halloween. I can't even believe that it's uh, here already. Uh, and it's kind of bittersweet for me, right? We are uh, able to harvest a buck early season, which is great. feel very blessed to have done that and uh, wouldn't trade that for the world. But the opportunity to hunt the pre-rut and the rut is upon us. And uh, luckily this year with the purchase of the new camera and some folks coming into camp and and uh, some neighbors and family, I'm going to be uh, kind of experiencing that or enjoying that hunting uh, like I used to, right? Uh, the majority of the time behind the camera. We have a lot of good coming down the road. The positive that we're, we're gonna talk about today, guys, is, is helping folks understand why we don't hunt A, point A and point B. We are in that pattern right now where we really needing to figure out help folks figure out why not to be at stagnant locations and what is what is different now about the, the, the about the mentality of a whitetail buck versus what it was two or three weeks ago and I think once folks start seeing uh, and understanding their mentality it it really helps tune or focus in uh, have better approaches uh, a, a better uh, a better understanding of where you should be hunting all of that together in my opinion sets up a more successful opportunity it has to be a knowledge before the not before the success follows the knowledge right um, I, I find a lot of folks have that we talked about it in the last video about this is where I hunt uh, you know in the early season this is where I hunt during the pre-rut this is where I hunt during the rut this is where I hunt during the, the uh, the um, you know the late season all the same location and we're just hoping and praying that you know a doe uh, drags a buck in or uh, you know you're sitting on a food plot or you're just at the end of the rainbow as I say right uh, wishing hoping and praying and dreaming that you know something happens you guys don't get me wrong it happens you know it happens but it's not the majority there's so much more that your property has to offer you through the pre-rut in the rut a lot of folks that have caught on to this across the country, there's a lot of folks out there, though, guys, that don't start hunting until the pre-rut or the rut. So if that tells you how much power that this time of the year has, because you don't have to hunt as much, you go in and your opportunity rates should be through the roof. So the, thing, the topic of today's video, hunting bedding areas. That topic you hear all the time right now during this time of the year, you need to start hunting mornings and you need to start hunting bedding areas. Okay, so... The first number one thing we need to clarify right off the bat that I try to help folks uh, understand, should we be hunting bedding areas? The first thing that I always ask back is, is it doe bedding area or buck bedding area? And a lot of times I get the uh, kind of pause and head scratch, like, I don't know, it's just habitat correct, right? It's bedding areas. Well, there's not a 100% guarantee, guys. You always we like, we like to talk about doe bedding areas and buck bedding areas. There's not a guarantee that we know. I mean, it's not you, you, you don't we don't give them a key to the bedroom, right? And and that's their bedroom and that's the buck's bedroom. That's the doe's. We can't manually, you know, we can't control that that defined. But simply stated is this doe, your doe bedding areas are always going to be closer to your destination food sources, whether that's a food plot or ag or whatever the case is. So Keeping that in mind is this, guys. That's where they want to be, right? Keeping in mind this. A farm that you're leasing or public ground or even a lot of privately owned properties don't have correct habitat as close to those, uh, you know, to those destination food sources as they should. And what happens is the does then find, they are going to find the first correct habitat nearest that and they take it over, okay? So hopefully that's still on your property. But what I see a lot of guys, is I see a lot of, there's a, there's kind of a no zone, if you will, right? So that no zone is between your, the edge of your food plots and correct habitat. That no zone in there is pretty much a dead area where that is a uh, transition, but that's a transition areas for your does to move right vertical, let's say, or or right in a direct line from that bedding area right straight up to, to food. And in order to get in there, you're playing with fire because you are in front of the bedded does. So you, there's a high, ch high chance that you're going to get busted getting in and out of that location. Problem with that is too, guys, is when you go to get out of the stand, you're in a direct line. 
uh, you're not teeing in the T style hunting uh, system that we teach, right? You're, you've got deer coming uh, directly at you and going behind you. When you leave, you're still in that line. Uh, bad, bad recipe. We want to tee into this line of movement. So when you, you always have your left and right deer movement. So setting that up, why I touched on that is this, it'll make a lot more, more sense to you when you see it, see this, you know, deal here uh, on the board. If you want to hunt your buck bedding areas, you need to, to understand first and foremost, those locations are always going to be behind the does or further away from uh, more secluded, right? Further away from your food, uh, in deeper of a core of a property, uh, on a property, uh, your neighboring property that doesn't hunt. Somewhere there is going to be a secluded area. That's where the bucks will seek to, to try to, you know, get back away from the drama, right? So there's, there's the definition of the buck bedding. The doe bedding, like we had touched on, is always up, up front. So when you say that we we need to hunt our buck bedding areas, or our clients are asking me, we need to hunt bedding areas in general, that clarification needs to be made because it's two totally separate styles. And we're going to touch on that and, and clarify that why that is two different styles, guys. If you are, so we're going to go into number two here. Cruising, bedding area. Uh, hunting a cruising location versus a uh, stationary. Stationary are your bedding areas, right? Your bedding areas that deer are there. They they are they they transition back into those locations in the morning and they leave from those locations. So they're bedded 10, 8, 10 hours a day, whatever that is. And then they get back up and they transition from there back out to the or food sources. Well, cruising is just that cruising is being in between those locations so we can take the opportunity to hunt those locations of those cruising bucks and or those does moving from a correct habitat to correct habitat and the cruising mentality of a whitetail buck is cruising those locations with the wind in his favor so he's using his eyes and and that the wind at the side of his head a lot of times so he's using two senses and making a lot of time and being very proficient on his feet, cruising and scent checking a property. The downfall to hunting buck bedding areas is this, guys. A lot of folks don't understand is if you are hunting a buck bedding area, you scout, you find that area, it's loaded with rubs. There's just a, you know one or two uh, beds in that location, and there's not. You can tell it's away from food, and you found that, and boy, it is. It's a great spot to ambush an unsuspecting buck going back to bed. Here's the problem, guys. We're gonna to go to the board here real quick and let me draw this one out for you. Unlike cruising mentality, hunting, the, the downfall of hunting a buck bedding area is we're here, let's say, or the buck bed is here, the stand location is here, this buck is coming back in to bedding, into that bedding location. We are hanging on that bedding location, one, so it has to be an AM hunt where you go in where he's not there, right? Don't try to hunt these situations in the PM. The buck's there. There's a very slim chance that you're going to, or a very high chance you're going to blow him out. Slim chance you're going to get in the stand without blowing him out, right? So this buck is trans, uh, transferring, back, transitioning back in here to bedding. What I see a lot of is this. Why I'm not a fan of hunting right directly on the bedding area, right on top of that area, guys, is this. He comes in, a lot of times what you'll find, guys, that bucks don't bed internal of a, of a secluded pocket. These bucks like to bed around the outside of this, okay? Well, the percentage that we're talking about here is the more percentage is what you'll find. Just Murphy's Law, right? You're in the stand location here, and that buck is going to come bed on this side over in here. Well, if that happens, hopefully, uh, you know, you, you have an opportunity to, to, to kill him before he gets there. But the worst thing that you could do, guys, is you could go in and trim shooting lanes in those buck bedding areas. That's one of the biggest things I see working. They go in, you hang stands, hang a stand down there, you trim a shooting lane. You have just played your card. He knows you're there. It's not something I recommend at all. It has to be a sanctuary. A sanctuary, the true definition of that sanctuary is secluded, left alone their world not our world that's theirs right not that we can't build it for them and promote it but we do nef definitely don't want to be hunting it here's and that's the example guys so he comes in he beds you don't get an opportunity to shoot him now what do you do you have to have an exit plan it's no different than hunting a food plot at that point 
that exit plan has to be concrete, has to be solid. What if that buck that I'm after comes in and I can't get a shot at him and he beds? Your plan is then you're staying all day because if you go to get out of that and you blow him, which a lot of times happen, guys don't can't hunt all day. Uh, the wives need need you back at the house, or you have plans and you got to leave. You go to get out of the stand, you get nailed. Or we try to be creative, we try to be fancy, get down out of the stand and try to stalk him, and that usually does not work. It 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 has, but it's not the majority, right? You have the, the slim, slim, slim chance of that all the stars aligning and that working perfectly. There's a better there's a better way. So. That, that's the, you know, the downfalls. The recommended stand location. If I'm telling you don't hunt the buck bedding areas, and I'm telling you don't hunt the food plots, and I'm telling you treat it all the same, Josh, where in the world do you want us to hunt, right? I get this all the time. Here is the perfect location to hunt during the pre-rut and the rut right now, guys. Dynamite, dynamite. I'm often asked, where are your rut stands? How many rut stands am I going to have on a property after you get designed? Guys, all my stands are rut stands. All my stands can be hunted during the pre-rut and a rut. And folks don't believe that. And it's, it's a big hurdle to understand. And here is why. You have to have a stand assemblage that ties into that cruising mentality for the whitetail buck this time of the year. If you don't, you, you take a, you take a 80% opportunity. And when you pull yourself off that stand location um, or that stand assemblage, guys, every time you pull a stand off and go internal of the farm and go to one of those secluded buck bedding areas, you take you take an opportunity away from that 80% chance during this time of the year, 75% chance if you're really watching the wind or the wind, the thermals, the weather, not overhunting it. It is it is that high. It can be that high. You take that opportunity, you take that stand, you move it to a buck bedding location. My feeling is you drop your percentage by about 25 to 50%. So now we're only dealing with 25, 30% opportunity of going in there and making that happen. So you can see where I'm going with this. The perfect stand location is this guys, understanding why I build the transition. I see a lot of folks doing guys, whether it's hunting public ground, and you're just hunting habitat pockets that you know are there, they're adjacent to food sources, you know the habitat is correct, and you want to hunt those, and in, you know a lot of folks understand we got to hunt the downwind side of them. But what a lot of folks don't understand is what's down 100 yards or 200 yards from you each way that the buck has to be on the right side of that habitat uh, area to, to scent check it. So, so what we're going to talk about is this. This black line, guys, at the bottom of the board here, is a promoted line of travel, is a line of travel in general. In our world, private landowners, that's a transition, right? That transition, the reason I build that that way, it on the contour, per your edge, all the way around the property, hopefully 360, around there, and the reason we build that and promote that is this, guys, because our stand locations are between bedding areas. These bedding areas are on the line of travel, this, as you can see, these are not big, solid, half-acre doe bedding areas that are, um, you know, doe bedding areas that are up adjacent to the food. These locations are away from your food, more secluded, uh, teeing into the line of movement, having that left to right movement in front of you. So these stand locations, guys, could be, you know, 50 yards off the fence row. They could be 100 yards off the fence row, 150 yards off the fence row, wherever that contour and that line of travel is built, you're teeing into that. So you always have that left to right movement opportunity, not this, not this opportunity where you're, or not this chance that you're, you're bringing them right directly to you. And then when they leave, even if you hunt a spot like this guy's right here and he comes in and beds and you, you have a plan to stay all day, usually what happens is he turns and goes right back away from you. How many times have you seen that on the outdoor you know channels or the videos in, around the country i've personally seen that many many times when i was in the cameras you know or have and the camera stand or having clients in there come in you don't get a ch chance at him the darn thing gets up and goes right back away from you it's a very slim it's a direct line of travel way of hunting and i do not recommend that this way here guys this line of travel is built the biggest thing we need to focus on is this understanding why you have to create these habitat pockets that I when I design your property. 
That's why these are located on the right side of the, the on the right side of the line of travel, on the right side of the transition. And this is why, guys, your stand locations are down here. Your blue marks are your foot, your foot, uh, your access and your exit into a stand location. You're hunting this on a wind that comes, you know, back towards you, not blowing it across the transition, unless it's a leeward situation, an AM leeward situation. Um, you're blowing it back at the stand, right? Your LB is your looking branch out here in front of you. You've got this left to right movement. Why I've got arrows on the both sides of this, guys, is because you potentially have the opportunity many, many times here on the farm here in Kentucky is a perfect example. You have left and right, not just left or right. It's left and right movement. You get a buck that travels this, guys, 20 minutes later, he can come right back through here. And the reason he's doing that is this, because these green check marks, these black, uh, areas here which are yellow on my designs if you're a client are your habitat pockets these habitat pockets are 30 to 50 feet in diameter uh, you know thinned out if it's too thick uh, added more uh, hinge cutting if it's if it's open timber it's habitat correct these the bucks don't know when they're tra when they're cruising guys they don't know what's in there they don't know what's bedded in there they just know that it's habitat correct and they know that they have to check it right the wind has to be good guys for him and it has to be good for you remember that if you're in these this is why i have red marks on this habitat pockets you know, a lot of folks do this without even knowing that they're doing it especially on public ground or a lease property you have to study you have to know what what is down that line of travel and which side of that them correct that correct habitat location you are and the reason for that is if you're in here and the wind is in your favor he has to be on the downwind side of this to, to scent check these these uh, habitat pockets along the way. You know, one of those you could put in between. You know, these are like, let's say the perfect location would be about 200 yards or, or so between your stand locations. So it's 100 yards each way of you. Depending on contour, you can bring them closer, right? 100 yards each side of you, you have these habitat pockets, guys. What that is, is as he's cruising, like I said, the wind is good for you and it's good for him. He's scent checking all of this. His eyes are ahead of him and he's scent checking all of that at the side of his face as he's cruising down through here. And all of these pockets are promoted to the best of the ability uh, of, of what they need. Like I said, they don't know what's in them. They just have to scent check them, right? If those habitat pockets are on the wrong side of the transition, and you build those on the wrong side of the transition, what happens is this, guys. A lot of times, the transition isn't even built. It's not even promoted. So you can't really dictate and steer them, if you will, give them a reason to be on the right side of it. It's just open hardwoods. Then there's a spot that's thicker than the rest of it, and they can go one side of it or the other. When they leave that spot, they go up here to the next habitat pocket. There's nothing to, to keep them, um, to keep that mentality going to keep that connection from from spot to spot keeping it daisy chained if you will from habitat pocket habitat pocket so these down here definitely you do not want to put correct habitat on that on the wrong side of that transition right guys the reason for that is is this if you build these on the wrong side and these habitat pockets are built down here purposely built down here you go to get in your stand you've got deer bedded on the wrong side of the transition they're 30 yards you know, 20 yards, 30 yards closer to your stand or are closer to you than they would be if they were across that line of travel, across some debris, across some thick vegetation, and they're not on your side of the line of travel. You go to get in that stand, you're going to get busted. So these habitat pockets have to be on the right side of the line of travel on that transition. And as he slides up through here, now there's a reason. For him to be there we're daisy chaining his movement we're daisy chaining his mentality together and like i said guys what you'll find is this adding the amenities water hole licking branch in between these not every one this would be a water hole right the next one maybe this is a mineral station on it uh the next one uh, maybe it's just the licking branch in the stand you know 40 acres you have two of these 80 acres you have three or four of these water holes around that all falling on that line of travel and every one of these stands locations has each side of that has one of these pockets promoted guys i'm telling you it's a huge 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 deal you can you can take your pre-rut and your rut and you don't your rut hunts you don't have to be to take the chance of hunting directly on the, the buck bedding 
I would highly recommend never hunting the backside right on doe bedding unless it's it's a secure, secure, uh, secured line that you know you can get out of Dodge or you're sitting there all day. Perfect example is if you have a uh, food plot, your doe bedding areas are here, let's say, and we've got some corridors built into a point of impact, right? So your stand location is here. All these trails maybe lead down into one. You've seen me do that before, kind of a hub style. Your stand is here, you're hunting this, and you're hunting this cruising movement back behind these doe bedding, right? That's a great, great spot to be. You just have to make sure that when you go to hunt that, then those are bedded right directly in front of you. And you have to stay there all day until these does go back out to the food plot and gives you enough room in here. These are these does are back out in the food plot and you can get, get out, get down and get out. Most of the time, that's not what happens. Everybody wants to hunt these doe bedding areas right on the back side of the doe bedding areas and they want to get out of the stand about 11, 10, 11 o'clock. Those does you know you're there. You might just as well not plan on hunting uh, your evening food, your evening uh, stand location, which is closer to food out here, your PM locations, guys, because the gig's up. They already know you're in the world. They're not going to move until after dark. So it's a huge, it's a huge piece of the puzzle, right? The you know, last thing we'll touch on, guys, is this. This all is determined. This this style. AM would be obviously that line of travel would be below those land, those stands. So this is all built below you, so your thermals are working around. So now you've got the wind and you've got the thermals, and he, he's cruising. So he's got wind, wind in his favor, thermals in his favor. Don't try to hunt this situation when it's the other way around, even though that you're, I get this all the time. Well, the only way that I can hunt it is I'm below it. Well, then you don't hunt it in the morning. Because the way I designed these all the way around the property and try to tie this together, some point around through there, your contour is gonna change where it gives you AM versus PM sits. Don't try to make it what it's not. We have a video coming here. Uh, guys, the next video in this chain here, explaining how you can hunt AM and PM at the same location, not the same stand, and pull these pre-rut and rut hunts off. Uh, separate video coming down the road here. I think you'll enjoy um, that a lot of folks overlook This is why I do not recommend hunting on bedding areas But this is the way that you hunt bedding areas and your stand assemblage doesn't have to move You don't have to take your stands. You don't have to go in there. You don't have to move your, tra your trail cameras You don't have to move your stands. You don't have to make that an invasive approach or change to get ready for the pre-rut and rut It's all all set up for you already. You're not disturbing your mature bucks that are inter interior of the core. You're waiting for them to come back out and cruise because of that mentality. It's a you're on you're on the a bypass, guys. You're on a highway, and all of these are places that they have to to, to uh, scent check when the wind and thermal is right for you, and it's right for them. Really watch when you build or you hunt a line of travel which side of that line of travel you're promoting that stuff or the habitat pockets on and making that habitat correct because if you do it on the right side of the transition and your line of travel you can sit there all day long during the pre-rut or during the rut and have movement all day long because they're scent checking those bedding areas and you don't have to blow out your bedding areas such as you do when you're hunting on top of a food plot what great way to keep your, your sanctuaries untouched throughout the entire year, guys, right? Hunting the, these two ways here is going to get you in trouble. Hunting this way, guys, is a fail-safe way to experience the rut and, and, and catch that cruising and be taking advantage of water hole situations and really, really escalating your, your property, your rut hunting potential. Thanks, guys.